in conversation with Chris Dixon. Hi there, viewers. Today, I'm joining a conversation with Chris Dixon, the author of That's OK, Exploring Emotions Through Children's Book. It's quite a pleasure to have Chris on the show today. How are you doing, Chris? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing very fine, too. It's lovely. We can do this, you know. I'm so excited, really. Nice. Yeah, me too. So, uh, yeah, I always love talking about um yeah, book creation and stuff, and yeah, grateful for for the time you put aside. Yeah, it's my pleasure as well. So, Chris, could you tell us about your children's book titled "That's Okay: Exploring Emotion Through Children's Book"? How does this book come about? What inspired you to write "That's Okay"? And again, I'd love to ask you, why do you choose to write in the genre of children's literature, particularly? Yeah, sure. So I think I'm trying to remember the kind of timeline of when it all started. I think I, it's over two years ago when I released oh. the first book. So, yeah, well, so I illustrated it myself um, and uploaded it and did digital art. But it all came about um, through my own mental health journey, really, where I've suffered from like chronic headaches and stomach oh. pains, which are there all the time and it made me anxious and depressed for about two years and then that went away and then when COVID came back with the lockdowns in in the UK and across the world of course um oh. yeah I felt like the depression coming back um and I was fortunate enough to to be able to get in quick with a, a therapist and mm. a lot of the talk was like about how like I couldn't, I didn't understand my own emotions. So I was like, I didn't know, like I felt something inside. Like if I was upset or angry, I felt like a lump in the throat and but I couldn't identify, oh, I'm upset with, with this, mm. for example. Like, I don't mm. know, for example, if I accidentally dropped a glass on the floor and it smashed and, you know, that I wouldn't be able to identify if that annoyed me or if I was embarrassed by that. Um, so through therapy, we talked a lot about, um, yeah, being able to process your own emotions and identify them. And I've always loved drawing as a kid. Um, mm. So I thought, yeah, let's make a children's book because I think, you know, when you're in your mind when you're like a child, it's like a sponge and you absorb so much. Mm. And I think mental health um, across the world, you know, it's, it's quite a stigmatizing topic to talk about. Like yeah, yeah. people don't feel confident to say how they feel. And I think teaching mm. that to children at a young age will – um create emotional awareness and intelligence and foster all that and also mm. give them the confidence to speak to their parents if they're upset about it um mm. yeah and just just own their own emotions and then i mean in an ideal world in a few years hopefully they'll, they'll avoid the problems that i and many others have, 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 have kind of gone through with our own mental health um mm. so i thought yeah the kid lit the children literature space was um the, the, the perfect place really to to create these fun images because my imagination's always uh, been a bit over the place so i thought that's perfect for for mm. a children's book so yeah that's that's how it all all came about and wow. i've had lots of interest since and yeah um others have followed from there well wow, that's quite amazing to know really i love the send of it and the start to the making of that talkie and now I would also love to ask you, you know, for readers who haven't read the book yet, and of course I know it's a student's literature, and without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what we'd expect picking up That's OK? And then, sorry, I'd love to add this. How do you come about the title? Yeah, uh, so, yeah, sneak peek. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, like, these inside. So it's more... Rather than a traditional children's storybook, I've gone for like a more of a guidebook. So, mm. um, yeah, so it kind of goes through each emotion. So there's emotions that are perceived as positive and negative. I'll show on the screen there. Um, so it opens up with like, I'm, I'm happy, which is perceived as a positive emotion. Mm. Um, and then it goes to talk about like, what you might feel like when you're happy like you might want to like smile and sing yeah um, <laughs> and kind of the physical feelings that, that you, you so you might feel full of energy and awake 
and then like an example um, at the bottom of a situation that you might feel happy in. So in this example, it's like you might feel happy if it's a special day, like your birthday. And then, yeah, it just goes through. So I think there's about 15 emotions in there. So oh, sad and, and stuff. So, yeah. So I wanted to create it in a way where it isn't like scary or terrifying for a child. It's like trying to make it quite fun, like, you know, because emotions are normal. Like we all get happy and upset and, you know, sometimes we can't help that. And then that, I guess that um, kind of encouraged the name of the book, That's Okay. I want something really simple and, and something that, you know, is kind of says what it is without any judgment. Like, you know, it is okay to, to be angry. It mm. is okay to, to feel jealous. Like, there's a, there's a character in there, like a green potato y thing, like, which is for, for jealousy. And I've drawn on my own experience as a child where my brother got a, a Lego set and I was really jealous of, of that. So mm. I use that as the example of, Oh, when you're jealous, um, it might be because a friend got a toy that you wanted. So, yeah, yeah that's okay. The title, I just wanted to make it kind of non-threatening and kind of like, you know, it is, it's fine how you are and, you know, we shouldn't judge people for, for how they react and stuff because I think the more we, we make that conversation about like, without any judgment or trying to fix people, then more people will be more confident in like, oh yeah, I am upset by this, mm. and then talk to it about their parents and teachers, and you know, hopefully, yeah, come to a resolution of something and being able to help that child out. Wow, wow, that's quite amazing, really. I love the take, and I love all you've said about the making of this book. Sounds very compelling to me, and something that you know, children would love to find nice time reading through. And now I'm curious to know if you experience any challenges in the process of writing the book. If there's any, could you share with us what challenge it is and how you ultimately overcame it? Also, how did you handle criticism as a writer, especially the negative ones? Yeah, that's good questions. Um, yeah, so challenges. I mean, there's been the plenty because this, this is a brand new space for me. Um, mm. Like... Um, going the self-publishing route and doing all the research so my my knowledge itself of the industry was very very limited and that was a challenge for for me wow. so I had to do a lot of research and also like creating the book so you know is is a, a factual piece and so there's research both on becoming mm -hmm. a self-published children's book author and also the the area of, of mental health as well so to overcome um, those, yeah, is research and asking other sources or other children's books authors and um, getting advice off them. Um, another big challenge for me was was more in my head it, my, itself of imposter syndrome and not oh. being confident with what I was creating. Like I've, I've, yeah, I've always like made stuff and sometimes my head's telling me oh, it's saying it's completely rubbish so like Ooh, wow. it was quite scary at first to 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 launch it because of leading on to potential criticism it's like i wow. i'm i feel quite vulnerable in a way like like i'm like putting wow. this work that i put mm. a lot of work into and i'm really proud of and and just that worry that it might get shot down or or just just yeah people won't won't take interest in it so that that was difficult to overcome, and it, with that, it was just like I've just got to do it. I've got to get over that that feeling, and if it's not well received, you know that that happens a lot in life. That's fine. It's either go back to the drawing board, or you know, call it a day. Um, at the end of the day, criticism is not a personal attack. Um, but yeah, as soon as I launched it, I think I had one one thing at the start, which which not my confidence a bit where I put it mm. forward for a, uh, an accreditation or an award. And uh, I got some feedback saying about how, yeah, the, I mean, the book's really nice, but there's no kind of practical uh, mm. examples of how you can be helped with, like if you are feeling angry, like all kind of how, you, how can mm. you stop being angry? I was yeah. thinking that this book isn't about that. It's about, 
being able to talk to people and not trying to fix it in that instance. Mm. So that that was quite hard at the start when I was like, oh, I'm already getting negative feed. Well, it's not negative. It was it was like help helpful because it's from a kind of group of authors and stuff. Um, but then after that, I've I've had sales and loads of good reviews and, and stuff oh. and um yeah i think if you're stuck in that headspace like I, I was with it um to overcome it just think that you know what we're fearing isn't actually happening like you know i i didn't know that there'll be loads of good reviews coming about it. and it's like oh. if you envision that there's good stuff that could happen then you can overcome that yeah. imposter syndrome um like one 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 review was really nice was there's a lady who takes one of my books out with her and if she sees a child upset like out if she's on a walk or something and the child's upset with their parents she'll go over and show them the book so Uh yeah yeah so overcoming that challenge and and getting to that point where there's loads of positive feedback is is incredible really um Uh yeah so i encourage anyone who is kind of stuck on the fence about launching a book or any other project to help other people it's like just do it because you could you could help to even helping just one person you know you're making Um, a difference wow that's quite amazing really i love your take and i love your answers to this question this sounds very compelling to me really so thank you so much for sharing yeah no worries thank you yeah i love them now, Chris, apart from that's okay, do you have any other works you've altered or maybe currently working on? Yeah, so since launching that, I've uh, got a bit addicted to, to making books. And I guess the advantage that I have is because I, I do the designs myself. So oh. going out to tender for an illustrator and, you know, that it's quite expensive process that I am able to, to cut that part out um mm. so yeah like in the evenings after my full-time job as a, as a marketer wow. um i'll happily just sit on my laptop and, and make more designs so i'm trying to count how many so i've got so that's okay and then that feels an earth maze and came after that which is a similar style to that's okay but all about climate anxiety so how wow. children can do things like they can recycle they can buy less sweets like just buy one sweet instead of two Mm. but just 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 little things but kind of fostering a positive attitude towards tackling issues with the climate and the environment and like Mm. if you if you foster that then I, i think climate anxiety can hold people back and if you're able to do positive action um yeah. then that can help kind of alleviate any feelings from climate anxiety um so yeah that that came second and then i made the, the that's calm guided meditation book um so yeah so similar kind of style to that's okay but um yeah built with a kind of relaxation in mind um mm. that one was really fun to draw i'll try and find my favorite bit i kind of drew the planet earth in space uh if i can find it the bit like the bird flies up and takes takes the characters to space so yeah wow. so yeah so as wow. and every time i do a book i feel my style improving as well mm. so i guess that's another tip really is like you're you're going to get better the more more you do it um, um and then i made an emotions book similar to that's okay but for teenagers and adults um unfortunately i haven't got a copy on me um and i've just completed a book where i've collaborated with with uh dutch climate activists on wow. climate change stories wow. so the first one's about polar bear and this one's quite interesting because this Dutch guy, he worked with year six students and they've written from the perspective of animals. So there's a mm. kid called Alex in year six who's written from the perspective of a polar bear talking to the government about like the ice caps melting and like, yeah. um, please help us and stuff. So hopefully there'll be more in that series where we take other children's stories. So I've illustrated wow. that. Um, and then I'm working on another project at the minute, which is um, individual 
books. Oh. Um, so like with the happy one, I've nearly finished a book where it's all about the happy character and they're going around um, and they meet the sad character and they, they like mm. share some stuff to try and cheer them up. Oh. I'm trying to make it into a, a, a rhyme as well. So that's more mm-hmm. of that traditional story book. Yeah, so I, r- I rambled on a bit there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, that's, that's, that's everything in a minute. That's actually amazing, really. I love the fact that you have so many interesting projects ongoing, yeah. That sounds quite, you know, quite amazing to me, really. And I hope they all go successfully. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, they've all had a lot of interest. Um, it's very competitive out there in the in the literature space especially children's literature um but yeah like i was saying as long as it each book just helps one person you know i'm 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 happy with that just just trying to make a slight difference yeah that's amazing and now chris i would like to ask you could you tell us what publishing is like for a published author like yourself are there any challenges you've encountered ever since you got published yeah, so I've gone the self-publishing route at the minute. So I use a print-on-demand service oh, wow. on my website. So so I create all the files. And it's one of the things I was scared about was um, how am I going to handle all the printing, how the book orders and stuff. And this solution works fine at the minute for the, for the kind of quantity I'm doing where it takes an order and it goes off to this third party's uh, mm. Uh, what printing house and then they'll post it for me so oh. um in terms of challenging that way that's been okay that's been quite helpful i mean the the price they charge is quite high so i mean ideally i'd like to get make enough money to buy bulk and sell it for cheaper for people because I, I believe that resources should be as cheap as possible yeah um so, I mean, that's the next challenge is kind of scaling to that point where I can get a big, big bulk of books and post them out and cut down the costs. Um, mm. And then another challenge, which is kind of do the print on demand because it takes a bit longer. It takes about five to eight working days for them to print. Oh. So every time I make a new book, I have to order a sample and then I have to wait for that to arrive, check it. And then a lot of the time, no matter how how well you think you've checked the book on your computer um it mm. comes through and it's like oh there's a slight word that's wrong or the margins wrong on that page and that that's probably the toughest bit is the because of the exciting and enjoying bit for me is the creation of the book and the most mm. stressful and uh, annoying bit is going over and checking and just changing things because your idea is already on the page and it's like mm. you're not doing much creative processes at that point yeah um so that that's been quite tough is is because i'm a one-man band um yeah waiting for those books to come through and having to check um so and around my day job as well that 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 does make it it tough so it is a it is a lot of work i'd say as a as a kind of overall challenge um you know we've all got to start from somewhere with it and and you know most of us indie authors have to have a full-time job on the side and this is is literally what we're doing in the evenings and weekends um so it's also kind of that you can lose motivation at time being self-published um Mm. but when i do that i try and remind myself to look at the reviews i got and think okay i need to keep making these resources because they are being appreciated um, wow. which can be hard to do when you're in your headspace where it's like, oh, this isn't going, or you, or you think it's not going too well and there's so much work to do. Mm. And also just kind of take your time with it as well, really, to overcome that challenge. Like, I'm quite in, I'm quite laid back and patient with everyone else, but with myself, I'm always impatient. I'm like, I need to launch this now. So wow. honestly, I'm reminding myself to take a step back and just take, take the process slow it doesn't matter whether this book gets launched today or in two months time absolutely you know, don't just that's amazing really cool thank you yeah so uh, yeah so it's, it's definitely worthwhile i'd say like it, all the challenges aside it's definitely worthwhile yeah that's lovely that's lovely to know i love your take on this and yeah it's, it's quite amazing to know
And now, is there anything that you would love to share with the viewers about your book that we did not mention in this interview and you'd love the viewers to know? Also, as a published author, what sort of advice do you have for other writers who are still struggling with publishing a book? Yeah, so I guess one thing I've missed about the That's Okay book is um, I want to learn a new skill skill as well as illustration. So I did a online animation too. Mm. I worked with a voiceover or a couple of voiceover artists on male and female voice versions. And then I created a animation on YouTube where the characters move about. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit extra. And also I created an augmented reality experience where you can scan the character with your phone and that animation of that character will appear. So that, that was quite, oh. quite cool. So Interesting. yeah. And then my advice, I guess for authors is um, yeah. Like I said about imposter syndrome and, and, not having the confidence and stuff it's like try not to, to worry about what you think other people think just just get out there and do it like the longer you leave it the more likely you're, you're going to talk yourself out of it mm. um and you know yeah most most ideas you know children respond to really really well like there's it's and it's really nice kind of doing kids reading and stuff and and seeing children like I, my worry was like, I'm not a big author at all. Like these kids aren't going to care what I have to say, but they they sit there and they listen and um yeah, and then they, some of them bought T-shirts that, of the characters and stuff off the site. So mm -hmm. yeah, my advice is just 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 go for it. Just try and put the that negative voice in your head to one side, and because mm -hmm. you could prove it wrong. Like most Literally. likely you prove it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's quite amazing, really. I love your advice, and I'm hopeful that viewers, including myself, would love to utilize it. Now, Chris, in case we have some viewers who are watching this interview and would like to get a copy of That's OK, on what platform is it available on for purchase? Yeah, so at the minute, it's on my, my website at the minute. So that's that's ok.co.uk. So there's OKAY as opposed to OK um so yeah that's okay.co.uk um they can order on there there's the t-shirts as well um and there's also free previews of all the books so they if you go on the main home page there's a free previews button so they don't have to purchase it to to try it they can download free previews of all the current books i've got online Mm. um and coloring sheets as well like there's coloring sheets in those free previews so yeah yeah oh. take take a look there's no pressure to to purchase um but if you do like what i do and do want to support indie authors then always happy for for orders to come through <laughs> of course but yeah. yeah the free previews are there because I, I want people to get access to the to the resources yeah, and I left a link in the discussion part of this interview where interested viewers can get a copy of Chris Dixon's books directly. So thank you so much, Chris, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P English Literature. It's awesome having this conversation with you. Thank you, yeah, good to speak to you. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. Excellent. Oh.